All right. I think this might be my, my shortest video ever. Remember that when you're 35 minutes into it and I've rambled forever. Um, <laughs> uh, day seven. The only instruct well, no, no, no. I was about to say the only instructor we had today was Russ, but that's not true. There was a, a second instructor we had for a brief amount of time. Um, so we got in there like in the morning, and we graded a an, a a homework assignment. One person forgot to do it. Uh, we did our logs. We got our logs caught up. The instructor reviewed our logs to make sure they were correct. Then we went outside and did pre-trip inspections for a couple of hours. Um, Russ still didn't use uh, reference paper on the pre-trip, which was annoying. Then after that, we did in-cab inspections, and he used a reference paper, which was awesome. Uh, everybody did really well on the, the in cab inspections. Um, then we, uh, apparently the, the whole thing about Russ not being properly licensed to instruct us was true because, uh, we weren't able to drive on public roads. Russ drove the truck over to Crossroads Mall parking lot. It's like some abandoned mall. And, uh... There were like four CDL University trucks over there doing maneuvers in the parking lot. Um, so we just sat over there all day long doing backing maneuvers. Um, a whole lot of standing outside. It was cold. And uh, then we drove back. Did our, got our logbooks caught up and went home for the day. That was basically it. Mm. There was some discussion that I got a little snippet of after the fact. Um, I think what it is is that whenever I'm doing stuff, the instructors are aware. Um, oh, and the second instructor... Which one am I going to forget? I should like make note of it. Okay, the second instructor. Uh, apparently one of the instructors lost their ability to instruct because they, they failed their DOT medical. They're, they got put on some kind of medication where they can't be certified anymore. So he came in to help Russ on how to teach us how to do backing maneuvers and neither him nor Russ can take us out on public roads. So that was the second instructor. The, uh, what was I talking about? Um, I knew I was going to forget it. I knew it. Um, oh. Whenever I'm doing maneuvers, like I've heard snippets of, of things that were talked about that I wasn't part of the conversation. And I think today I finally figured out what's going on. Whenever I am doing um, maneuvers or I'm driving or something, because I'm a veteran driver and they don't have to really give me much of any instruction, the instructors are going over and talking with the other students while I'm doing that stuff. And uh, the uh, instructor apparently got to talking with the other students about the instructor situation. And... I think like there was an instructor that retired or went part-time or something and then another instructor lost his medical card for whatever reason whatever's going on they're down a couple of instructors and uh, the instructors that they have working part-time like Cindy Cindy only works Thursday and Friday occasionally on Monday um, she's on some like she's on social security or something and uh like if she makes over a certain amount of money then she would lose some kind of benefits i forget what but she can't work any more than what she is working even if they want her to and uh so they're they're having some kind of instructor shortage right now and basically 
what the conversation was around was how that is going to affect us going forward. There are apparently not enough properly certified instructors for all of the students to go out and drive around town at the same time. And generally what they do is if there's good weather, they do backing out at Crossroads Mall. And then when there's bad weather, they drive around town. Well, we wouldn't be able to drive around town. And they said that priority would go to students who are further along in the course um, because they are the ones who are about to take their CDL test. So if there's an instructor shortage, then our class is the lowest ranked class that's currently out on the roads driving. Uh, the class behind us that just started on Monday is still doing classroom stuff. So if somebody gets cut and like does something like they, they don't have an instructor for the day, we would be the class that lost out on the instructor. So we will uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> tomorrow, the reason I think they were talking about it is because tomorrow is supposed to be a bad weather day and we're expecting that we're all going to be driving around town tomorrow. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm starting to think that I could probably go and pass the CDL test right now. As long as I didn't get a tester that was uh, extremely strict. Um, a lot of the CDL school stuff that they're having us do is... Uh, it's unfortunate. It's What will happen is that you'll get some DOT examiner that is just kind of making up their own rules. And they will like mark a student off for not doing something that isn't really a requirement because a lot of the uh, the examiner um, like what they're going the list of items that they have it's just like they have a checkbox for like did they check the alternator or something like that well whether or not they consider the alternator to be checked is kind of at the discretion of the examiner like how in depth of uh, like a check of the alternator does this particular examiner want well what CDL University has been doing and I'm making some assumptions here based off of comments that they've made about oh we do this because of this examiner and this is stuff like that is whenever one of their students gets marked off or fails a test because of something a specific examiner uh, expected them to do and they didn't do, they add that to their list of crap that they, they want us to do. And so their list of crap has been expanding and expanding and expanding. When I first took the CDL test, you would just go through the items and say properly mounted and secured. Basically, you know, to explain to them that I'm checking to make sure it's not hanging there, just dangling. Well, what they're having us do in this class is explain what it's properly mounted by. Like, on one of the items, it's uh, like the, 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 the suspension linkage, properly mounted, secured with nuts and bolts, castle nuts, and cotter keys. That level of detail I don't think is necessary on the exam, but because one examiner was so anal that they failed a student for not mentioning that, that would that's an examiner problem. That's not that that student probably shouldn't have been failed. Uh, that that's absolutely ridiculous that they would make them go into that level of detail on an inspection. That was probably some new examiner, or maybe the student lied. Like, the, the CDL University people aren't standing over the shoulder of people whenever they're doing the, the tests. So uh, maybe a student failed miserably and just made up the excuse that, oh, because I didn't say that it was held on by nuts and bolts, they failed me. Who knows? I have no idea. But uh, I think the level of detail that they're making us go through 
on explaining stuff is way overboard. Uh, I understand their logic on it that we're going to over prepare and we're going to do an, an absurdly ridiculously detailed inspection so that there's no possibility that we could fail if you do their inspection there's no way you could fail if you get an examiner that fails you if you do their inspection then there's a problem with that examiner um, but it's, it's a little like annoying to have to memorize that much stuff so, um, I don't know. I'm going to do it. Um, it's a lot to memorize, and I'm dreading it right now. This video is only 11 minutes long. I said at the beginning this might be one of my shortest. <laughs> if it's under 30 minutes, it might be one of my shortest. <laughs> um, but... Uh, I, I really don't like memorizing the pre-trip. Um, I also don't like the way that they're teaching the maneuvers, the backing maneuvers. We've only learned one maneuver so far, and it's the offside backing. And there's no way that I would back like this in the real world. It is so dangerous. It is completely blind backing. They, they basically have you completely jackknife the truck and then jackknife it back another direction and then like do two more. It's like four total jackknifes. Um, on a back and uh, and then you should be lined up at that point and then you can just do a straight back but they have reference points on the trailer you're supposed to match up the side of the truck with a trailer reference point on a jackknife and then go back to another reference point back the other direction and it's just memorizing it's like dumping a cert it's, it's memorizing a backing maneuver um, so I don't like it. It's dangerous. It, it's not something I would do in the real world. Um, I told them that I could probably back it up much better and much easier by not doing this ridiculous maneuver. Um, but they told me that uh, in their class, I'm going to do it their way. Uh, and when I take the test, they expect for me to do it their way. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, you know, you got to do what you got to do to get the the CDL. Um, I hope the rest of the maneuvers are not like this. Um, I don't. The alley dock is the one that they all hate, and the reason that they all hate the alley dock is that you're doing your own setup on the alley dock, and you can't get the exact same setup every single time. So it's more of uh, like you just get a feel for it you have to be comfortable with the vehicle and its maneuverability and so I'm just gonna be able to just back in I'm not gonna have to memorize some stupid like you know turn the wheel all the way to the right and you know go this direction until you see this reference point and then come to a complete stop and then turn the wheel all the way back over to the left and then go in the opposite direction until you get this reference point uh, so everybody hates the alley dock because it's a real back it's not just memorized reference points but that's the one that I'm probably going to enjoy the most because it's an actual real world back everything else is point memorization reference point memorization so uh, three more weeks I really 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 need to memorize the pre-trip inspection I need to get the verbiage down I'll probably spend a couple hours doing that tonight. And uh, hopefully I sleep good tonight. And I can spend a couple hours tomorrow night, and the next night, and then the next night, and then the next night. And then over the weekend, I can hopefully fine-tune it. That's basically all I need to do is memorize the pre-trip. And uh, that's it. I am highly confident that I can pass all of the skills test and the road test without issue. It's just the pre-trip inspection and the in-cab inspection. And I could probably pass the in-cab inspection. I did it today, and I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier in the video, but when I did it, I was able to get about 90% of it um, without, ish without you know somebody having to help me. So... And I, I could probably, 
I don't know the exact, I haven't memorized the exact verbiage that CDL University wants me to use on, uh, on their pre-trip inspection, but I have memorized almost all of their pre-trip inspection. The only section I haven't memorized yet is the coupling system, which is basically the fifth wheel. Uh, and the apron of the the trailer, um, and I so I don't know like what the exact names of all of the items are. I haven't memorized all the item names and how many items I have to call out, but I could probably wing that. Um, and just knowing the items without the verbiage, the verbiage is just a CDL University thing. All you have to do in the the pre trip is just display that. You know, you're not expected to be a mechanic. You're just supposed to go through the items and verify that they're properly mounted and secured and uh, what you're looking for in your inspection. So on hoses, I'm looking for abrasions, bulges, and cuts, properly mounted and secured. Uh, fluid, I'm checking to see that it's within manufacturer specifications of minimum and maximum. Cap is on. No breaks or cracks. You know, stuff like that. Um... CDL University has a long list of verbiage because of what I explained earlier. People getting marked off for bad examiners, basically. It's, uh, it's a shame. But, uh... 16 minutes. Ugh, I don't want to go work on memorizing my pre-trip. I need to get the verbiage down. Maybe that's what I'll do tonight, is memorize verbiage. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, well, it's not like anybody watches these videos anyway. This is more of me just, like, getting some therapy time. Uh, right now I use these videos to procrastinate on doing things. And it's kind of like a, a diary, a video log, a vlog, if you will. Um, I don't know if I'm going to continue doing these videos. Once I get to the point where I'm in the truck driving, it's going to become a pain to do the videos. Because right now, I know that there are people who do YouTube videos and stuff, and they don't have any issue at all with busting out their camera and just recording stuff. Uh, I have an issue with that. Uh, one of the things that I, I notice in videos like let, Trucker Jukebox, he, he has like this strap system with a GoPro in his chest, and he has that thing running all the time. Everywhere he goes, he'll go into like truck stops and... I see quite often people will ask, "Are you recording?" And they'll they'll get like offended, and you know people will be like, uh, "They'll it just it creates tension." People get defensive whenever you're recording them. Uh, so I really don't like busting out the camera on stuff. So. I don't know. Whenever I am stuck in a truck with somebody else, I'm not going to have the privacy to sit here and just talk into a video camera like this. So whenever I'm you know, a student for 28 days with USA Truck, which hopefully I can get that time shortened, um, I might not be able to do videos during that entire time because I'm not going to be willing to just sit here and do a video like this while somebody else is two to three feet away from me. I can't be honest in that video. I can't just say whatever I want because they're going to hear everything I say. Um, I guess I could maybe find some time to slip away and sneak off or something. I don't know. I don't know that I'm willing to put that much effort into it. So I might just stop doing the videos altogether. Hmm. Something to think about if uh, if my one subscriber notices that my channel goes down one day or I have zero videos, then that's probably what happened. I just decided that I wouldn't continue doing this. Um, 
But anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good one.